Okay, after the uh, body is smoothed out a little bit, it's time to attach the head. I have carved the head part way. Notice again the eyes, the eye holes are there already. And this head I want to have so the uh, duck is, or the, the loon is looking towards the left. Now I'm putting a straight pin in here, and when I put the head on, it'll make an impression in the head and the body as to where I want to put my doll. There you can see the impression in the body and the impression in the head from the straight pin head. Using my drill, use a 3 inch dowel, stick it in the hole and mark it as to how deep it goes. Whether I have a little mark, it goes into the body that deep. And I put it into the head also. And it's almost as deep there. So what I want to do is add both of those little lines together and cut it off. So I'll add, add this line and that line. And I'll test fit it looks great this is where I want it. Okay, the next step would be glue glue the head on. To be under nice and tight we're going to put it in a clamp. First I block up the beak then I use a large clamp And I feel around the back, make sure it's a tight fit. And there, in a few hours, that'll be ready to work. While the uh, glue is sitting on the loon that I just glued the head on, I'll go to the next process, which is the same loon, the same type of bird, only I've got to do a lot of work around the neck to blend everything in. And uh, I use a variety of tools. This is called a rat tail file. It works wonderful uh, for getting in the area around the neck in this area. So I'll do some of that right now. I want to get rid of all saw marks from the bandsaw. And this will do this. Okay, after I have to do some more shaping and final shaping and sanding, I'll take it outside on my sander make it nice and smooth similar to what it is on the back and I already have another loon here that I have sanded and this basically is the next this is a, a loon that's been final sanded and also I have carved in the wing sockets to make the looks were <clears throat> make it I'll turn it a little bit so you can see it but this would be the next step in the process. You notice I have outlined the beak and carved the beak. The, uh, all the beaks will be carved and wood burned. There's no paint or stain on my products. It's all wood burned. Okay, back to my large loon. Now the next step would be to draw all the feathers on so you have the same amount of feathers on each side so it looks symmetrical and the next project is this swan. I have it started. Now this is basswood. It's a different wood. And the uh, I have drawn all the feathers on. The main feathers I've drawn them on and I've started. Uh, I have outlined each feather and I've also uh, shadowed some of the feathers and I have finished some of the feathers.
this is how the side feathers are drawn in. Uh, drawn in at random. There, I'll put the same amount on the other side. Now, the next step will be, I'll show you how to wood burn. Okay, here is a gall that I have started. Uh, each feather has been outlined. And here is another mallard that I have got partially done. It still has a lot of work to do. And I'll be working on the swan today. The swan needs uh, shadowing on the large feathers, so I'll do that first. I use a, it's called a detailer. The uh, tip gets almost, uh, almost red. It gets very hot. And I need magnifying glasses and bifocals to get close enough. Turn it up a little bit, a little bit harder. It's very uh, tedious, you might say tedious work. But when it's done, it's uh, well worth the effort. It's too hot. It's too hot, so I gotta cool it off a little bit. Okay, all these side feathers, one feather lies on top of another feather. So when that happens, you want to start at the rear or at the back of the bird and work your way forward, which gives the illusion that the front feather is actually lying atop the back feather. Remember always to make curved lines because there are no straight lines in nature. Always overlap a little bit. There, there's three side feathers. This is a uh, teal that I have finished. And as after all the feathers are detailed on, I sign each carving. My name and the number of the duck, it's, it's an inventory number. So since 1990, this is duck number 2839 of all of all the carvings and the date that I completed it description it's a teal it's a female teal and I'm very proud to say that is it is made in Wisconsin after this is done I put on four coats of varnish to seal it and it is now for sale
For those of you who uh, might want to dwell into carving, uh, be very patient. Uh, don't rush. Don't expect to get things done overnight. Uh, this is my first project back in the 1970s. It's a Madonna. I had a lot of help with it. If you want to, if you want to continue carving, go to classes, buy plenty of books, read, uh, and I guess enjoy carving. Now this is one of my last projects that we had. Uh, over the years, I have cataloged or my inventory was over 2,800 ducks. I really enjoy it. When people buy a carving from me, I feel that they're buying a uh, part of me. My other passion is, you can see behind and above me here, I also build and fly radar control airplanes. I have uh, lots of them, I fly them all, and I really enjoy it. That also, I uh, scratch build most of these, which means I make every piece, and when I go flying, somebody will say, well, where'd you get that? And I say, I made it. <laughs>